So I am sick and tired of metal blast gates. And for a couple reasons, I think they're terrible. The biggest of them being is when the blast gate is open, there's a massive gap in it. If you feel around your metal blast gates, you can feel air being sucked in from the side. Now I've created a wooden blast gate in both a four inch and six inch version that I think solves that problem as well as a few others. So let me bring you into the bench and show you a few of the features. So I have full size plans of both the four and six inch on my website. It's important to know that these are for the least expensive piping options that people usually use for dust collection systems. The four inch has an outside diameter of 4.215 inches. The six inch has an outside diameter of 6.25 inches. It's the thin wall PVC and your standard sewer drain pipe that you would get at Home Depot for the four inch. I think we've solved a few problems here. The first one being the metal blast gates you mount the pipe on the exterior. Mine you mount on the interior. They're perfectly sized and the ring on the inside is the inside diameter of the pipe and the rings on the outside are the outside diameter. And what that does is you stick your pipe in here and that closes up the gap when the pipe is open. So when you caulk your pipe in, as long as you've cut your pipe square, it seals that gap as you see in the close up here and it keeps any airflow from escaping. When this is closed, it also doesn't leak because it's not a thin piece of metal, it's a piece of flush mounted wood. The wood completely seals this off so you lose absolutely no airflow. So it's important to know when you put your washer spacers in here that the side without the spacers is closest to your dust collector. Thanks for that introduction, Jonathan. I'll go ahead and take it from here. So I thought his design for these wooden blast gates was a great idea. And I mentioned in my last video on dust collection that I'm in the process of building a mobile workbench with dust collection built right into it. And so these wooden blast gates are gonna be part of that build. So let me show you how I use Jonathan's plans and templates to cut out the pieces. Welcome back to the wood shop. My name's Brett. Here we go. I begin by laying out all the parts for four blast gates on a sheet of half inch Baltic birch plywood. And I was able to get all the parts for three blast gates on four feet by 22 inches. So four by two roughly. And then another row for the parts for the fourth blast gate. I'm gonna cut all these parts with a combination of jigsaw and bandsaw. So one little thing I learned while doing this is that you may want to jigsaw out your circle before cutting the perimeter of the piece because as I was cutting these circles, especially on these pieces, there's not a lot of material support for the base of the jigsaw. It still worked, I had it done, but it was a little tippy in some places. So I would do the circle first and then cut the perimeter. Moving on from there, now I'm going to put double stick tape on the templates and stick it to the piece and then flush trim route all of the edges. And then I will have perfect pieces. And if you haven't seen me do this before, leave yourself a little paper tag so you don't have to go peeling up the paper backing. Big time saver. That should probably do it.
The routing with the templates work really well. You want to be careful when you're separating from the workpiece because I accidentally split my template a couple of times. You'd think I'd learn from the first one, but um, I used a just a putty knife to to oh, almost did it again um, to separate them, and I had to glue it back together. So just be aware of that that you're actually between the workpiece and the template, so you don't split your template. Uh, no big deal. Super glue. That's what it's for. And another thing I want to mention with these templates is um, it doesn't take a lot of double stick tape, especially this tape. It's been working really great for me. I found myself putting like shorter and shorter strips of tape on it just because it had the holding power it needed, but then I'm not tearing up either my templates or the pieces with too much tape. It's also not the cheapest tape, so I don't want to waste it, but this is really the best double stick tape I've used. It's really thin, it sticks well, it removes well, nothing but good things to say about it. I'm gonna put it away in my tape cabinet. And this spiral flush trim bit from Bits Bits, man, that thing works flawlessly. That, it was a beautiful thing. Man, I had no, no issues with the bit at all. It's got that Astro Glide coating on it and it's a spiral down cut. This is my first time using it. And it probably helps to have Baltic birch plywood too. All right, next step is drilling out those holes. I'm glad I had this fence set up because on this one piece it just didn't look like it was lining up right so I went back and double checked it with the template and yeah the pilot holes were off a little bit so I retraced the circles and now we've got it lined up better. So temporary fence, great idea. Thanks YouTube. I spared you from having to watch the round over and two hours of sanding for all the parts for these four blast gates. You're welcome. Now it's time to add some paste wax to some of the surfaces. There's a total of six individual pieces that go together to make one blast gate. And I'll be waxing just the surfaces that glide against each other so that they operate as smooth as possible. And this is where things get critical because you're going to be caulking pipes into these and it's important that you only put paste wax on the correct side. So I went ahead and pre-assembled these and then marked out which side needs wax. And all of this information is in the printed plans from Katz Moses. So on the outside piece, we're going to call this a flange. You only want to wax this one side, not the other. And on the moving gate, we can go ahead and wax both sides. And for this second flange piece, there is kind of a, a top and a bottom. Um, you want the mirrored surfaces to be waxed because these holes line up with the gate. So make sure you're waxing the right side. That's why I labeled everything. And then for assembly, I'm using quarter 20 bolts. I'm using a three inch for the outside three and a two and a half inch for the pivot point because that's only going through three layers. You could maybe even get away with a two inch but two and a half will work just fine. And this wall mount piece has no wax on it at all. And we're starting with the tool side as I have labeled here. And then we'll put our first flange piece. And the, there is kind of a, a left and a right to these. The holes are not exactly symmetrical. So one way fits better than another. And that's by design because the big holes need to line up with each other. Don't force it. It should go on pretty easily. If you're having to force it, you might have it reversed. And then the spacer piece, we'll go over those bolts. Again, there's kind of a left and a right to these, so make sure you don't have it flipped. And I've only waxed the inside edge. Put our pivot bolt in. 
And then after the flange and before the spacer, we're going to add washers to these just to give it a little bit of space to slide freely. Um, because without those, the whole assembly is just too tight to operate freely. So we put our just regular flat washers and then the spacer. And then our gate on the pivot point. Make sure our line, hole is lined up, and it is. And then the second flange goes on top of that, wax side down. And then our other wall mount plate. And this has no wax on it either. And then once all that's together, lock washers on all four bolts and our quarter 20 nuts. And we'll cinch all that together with a 7 16 wrench. Just snug is good. You don't need, need to get super tight. And one thing I didn't think to do at first was to test fit the template to the pipe. And so when I got this all put together for the first time and I went to put the pipe in, it didn't fit. And I was like, what the what? This is four inch PVC pipe, but turns out there's two different kinds. And it does, does say that on the plans. And I didn't pay attention to that. And I went ahead and got the wrong size pipe. They're both four inch interior diameter. But as you can see, this one is a lot thicker. So this one does fit. This is also the cheaper type of four inch PVC pipe. You may even want to take the step of taking the template to the store and making sure that the pipe does fit before you buy it and cut it up like I did. Now I can't return it. This one fits and it's actually a little bit loose. This will get glued in there with silicone and it'll be, it won't move and it'll be airtight. It's just a little bit more of a gap than I would have thought. I'm not quite ready to cut this pipe down and caulk it in myself because these blast gates are gonna be going into my new workbench that I haven't built yet. And so until I'm actually in the space where I'm going to be installing these, I won't know how long or at what angles these are going to be mounted. So I'm going to hold off on that piece. When you are ready to install your pipe, make sure that your blast gate is closed and then put the pipe in there all the way up. And as long as your pipe is cut square, you'll have a nice seal and then caulk that gap in both sides of the blast gate. So in a lot of cases, these blast gates will be exposed on the pipes wherever you're working with them. But in my case, these are going to be mounted inside my new workbench. And one feature that I like is that it operates with just a pull of a cord. So green is open, red is closed, and then I only have to have a small hole in the wall of my workbench for these to pass through. So I like that idea. If you're interested in making these wooden blast gates, I have a link in the description to the plans and the templates as well as all the tools that I use in building these. So until next time, my friend, be safe and love each other.